Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about one of the key questions. What are the solution architect roles and responsibilities in on-premises private cloud environment? So here are the high level information specifically for the solution architect role. So normally in, in an on-premises private cloud environment, a solution architect is responsible for designing and implementing the architecture that supports the organization business needs. In other words, business goals and objectives. So most of the time in our IT infrastructure, all the roles and responsibilities, generally it's categorized into the four categories. Let's say the first one, we call it as day zero design and day one is deploy and day two is operations and day n is day three, day four and so on is life cycle. So normally the day zero solution architect will design the solution architecture and based on the solution architecture, so day one team, they will implement the entire solution components and then day two team will work on the operation of all the day two operations of each and every software component, including infrastructure and all the layers. And day in is like a life cycle management. It refers as a updates and upgrades. Okay, so within this, if you want to understand the better roles and responsibilities, we categorized all the roles and responsibilities into a six items. Those six items includes solution design, capacity planning, vendor management, security and compliance, and the fifth point is disaster recovery and business continuity. And the last but not the least, performance monitoring and optimization. So I will try to explain all the points one by one. The first one is solution design. So solution design means the solution architect is responsible for designing the private cloud environment. This includes determining the hardware and software components and the network and security requirements and the physical and logical architecture. For example, the solution architect may create a diagram that shows the layout of your physical infrastructure and including the location of servers, storage devices and network equipment. Suppose if you notice this diagram, the solution design minimally most of the organization, they may have minimally two data centers. So data center one and data center two, and they may also have a, some organization may have more than two data centers. So we have to define the data center location name and DC to location name. Let's say DC1 is in some X location and DC2 also in the some Y location. And within the DC, we have to highlight within our architecture diagram, we have to highlight the main solution components that is categorized into the three parts, resource plane, control plane and application plane. And same way for this data center two, resource plane, control plane and application plane. When it comes to the resource plane, the main physical resource plane is includes server, network and storage. Suppose within our solution architecture design, we are planning to choose the server as one of the HPE server. Let's say DL380 generation 10 plus, that is the server. So all your data center servers, we are preferring the HPE model and network. If you want to choose the any of the network devices, we may use the either Cisco network switches or we can use HPE Aruba switches. And for the storage, Either we can use HCI hyperconverged infrastructure like uh, HCI solutions using VMware vSAN, or we can use Nutanix AHCI, Nutanix HCI solution, or in, in we can also use a external storages. These details it's clearly mentioned within the customer requirement. Once we read the RFP request for proposal based on the RFP document, we have to finalize which is the more suitable for this solution. Let's say that based on the customer requirement, we can finalize the server equipment, network and also the storage. And once the resource plan is confirmed and we have to come to the control plane, even within the resource plane, we need to plan for a virtualization. Or we go for a VMware vSphere virtualization, or we can go for a Microsoft Hyper-V, or we may go for a Nutanix AHV. It is also subject to the customer's choice. So we can suppose we are planning for a VMware. We can choose the VMware hypervisor, how many hypervisors we need to be installed. That's the specific information we need to highlight in the diagram, VMware vSphere 
and if you want to use a software defined networking we can include the nsx and if we plan for a storage virtualization we can include the virtual sun that is a software components once the resource plan is confirmed even nowadays most of the workloads are moving from a virtual machine workloads to container based applications so even if you want to use a containerization solution we can include within the resource plane which is tangible and come to the control plane how we are going to manage these resources like we can use the tools like vcenter server we can also use any of the cloud management tools like vmware vrelays automation or if you want to use private cloud solution we can use vmware vcf vmware cloud foundation suppose if you want to use from the microsoft we can use azure stack hca and suppose if you want plan for a nutanix solution we can use nutanix com this and all the control plane to manage your prem on premises provide cloud infrastructure on top of the control plane we can deploy the applications like these applications can be all our project related applications so whatever the main applications like erp sap and database application you can highlight in the application plane whatever diagram we did it on data center 1 the same will be replicated on a data center 2 and some customers they may look for a active active design some may look for a active passive design so based on the requirement you can choose the diagram okay i'm just giving a just a clear idea how we can in include our solution blocks okay so that is in the solution design and the next point is capacity planning so for our easy understanding i took a two rack diagram two racks so one rack running with multiple servers and also the it have a some switches core switches and some of the other switches and same way second rack also we have multiple servers and we can also have a switches and we can also include the storages either we can use hca solution or we can use a separate storage rack okay and this is just for our idea the importance of capacity planning is the solution not tech performs capacity planning to ensure that private cloud environment can support the organization workload and this includes determining the number of server storage capacity and network bandwidth is required for example the solution not tech may create a diagram that shows the number of servers so how many servers are required to support the organization workload and how they are connected to network so most of the time there are top rack switches are available in each rack and also all the top rack switches also connected internally and this diagram we have to write either in the direct diagram you can use some stencils to create the diagram or you can use excel sheet simple excel sheet also make the rack diagrams but the capacity planning suppose we are planning to do the capacity planning using vsan sizing there if you type in the google vsan sizing you can find the direct official vmware vsan sizing link and we have multiple vsan architectures either we can use vsan ordinary storage architecture or express storage architecture suppose nowadays latest one is express storage architecture so depends on the customer requirement you can choose the specific architecture either we can provide the vsan sizing within the vsan sizing itself we can find the server count and how many disks are included in the each server and also we can plan for your network ports information so with that server and storage is confirmed and network how many servers we have based on the network uh, server count we can also plan for the switch counts as well okay so this capacity planning may vary from one organization to another organization so that's the reason i'm just giving a brief overview okay and another scenario is vendor management even based on our architecture diagram if you see within the resource plane we are using server means either we can use dell hpe ibm or any other third party vendor that means vendor need to be contacted for the servers and same way for network aruba or cisco or any other vendor and storage we can use hp alatra primera storage nimble or any of the other solutions like virtual san or nutanix hca solutions that means those vendors we need to contact for the licensing information and same way for control plane either we can use vmware vcf stdc manager to control the infrastructure plane or you can use a morpheus for the cloud management platform and also the applications even for each application we may contact the respective vendors for the licensing and pricing information 
okay so the point is the solution architect manages relationship with hardware and software vendors to ensure that organization has a necessary technology to support the provide cloud environment for example the solution architect may create diagram that shows the different vendors so as i mentioned resource physical resource we have some vendors and even for management platform we have vendors and application also we have a vendors so technology they provide such as servers storage device network equipment okay and the fourth one is security and compliance so security compliance means the solution architect is responsible for ensuring that private cloud environment meets the organization security and compliance requirement this includes implementing appropriate security controls and policies as well as monitoring the environment for security threats and for example the solution architect may create a diagram that shows the different security controls and how they implemented the private cloud environment normally the security level we have to show even in our hardware itself it comes with a silicon on trust and also we have a hardware level encryption we can also use the key management server to encrypt all our servers that is a one level of security this security not only in the one layer we should cover on the hardware layer virtual machine level encryption and also the application level and the compliance perspective we have to maintain the all all our environment diagram should be the meet as a fully compliant it's a match to our customer requirement sometimes if there is any requirement is considered as non compliant we should work on the necessary uh, we should take the necessary actions to make this as a fully compliant and fifth point is disaster recovery and business continuity so even for our whatever solution architecture we prepared this architecture when we planning to implement this infrastructure should be highly available and also performance should be less than the 80% and monthly daily or weekly we are taking the reporting so during the reports also we have to identify whether our infrastructure is healthy or not but as part of disaster recovery and business continuity we have to include some tools like vmware srm or we can use veeam cdp and for business continuity and disaster recovery purposes so it will help us in case of any of our server or data center is down we can re recover the data from the data center too but most of the production workloads are like a virtual machines workloads and also the container workloads in case of dc2 down we can recover from dc1 if the dc1 is down we can recover from the dc2 so we should always maintain either active active data center or active passive data center based on the customer objective and the point is the solution architect design and implement the disaster recovery and business continuity plan to ensure the private cloud environment can recover from disaster or outage continue to support the organization operations for example solution architect may create the diagram that shows the different components of the disaster recovery plan includes the backup failover systems and recovery procedures okay and last point is performance monitoring and optimization so this is also one of the key role as part of the solution architect responsibilities so solution architect monitors the performance of the private cloud environment and makes the necessary adjustments to optimize the performance and ensure that environment is meeting the organization's needs for example the solution architect may create a diagram that shows the different monitoring tools like for example if we consider the vmware we can use virilize operations manager for monitoring purpose it will cover the all the virtual infrastructure virtual machines and container workloads and sometimes if you want to centrally monitor the logs we can use virilize log inside and if you want to take the network band network uh, traffic between virtual machines and to virtual machine or virtual machine between applications we can use virilize network inside similarly you can also use the third party tools as well for monitoring we can use solar winds npm solar winds network performance monitor or any other third party tools and they are used to track the performance of the private cloud environment normally this monitoring tools and all it will help us to track our daily report weekly monthly reports and so that we can also analyze and we can do the performance tuning for our infrastructure okay for effectively efficiently and optimized way and finally overall the solution architect roles and responsibilities in an on premises private cloud environment involves designing implementing and also the operation operating in a secure scalable and resilient environment that can support the optimize organizations business goals and objectives so most of the 
solution architect mainly focus on this six pillars okay so hope you understand the main key roles and responsibilities of solution architect okay thank you if you are watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to the grand cloud garage channel if you are already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now